So we're going to launch the Axolotti software. Um, if it's the first time you've ever put your card in, it will probably do some update of the firmware. You just follow what's written on the, this console. I have a few red messages. It's nothing important. It's a few objects that I have that probably don't work anymore or something. The first thing I'm going to do after making the box, if you follow the making of, um, is to test out all my buttons. So I'm going to make a new patch by going to File, New Patch, creating this window. Let's open this to full screen. And I'm going to test my inputs. My inputs are soldered onto things called GPIO. So I double click on the background and open my object selector. So this will open an object into my patcher. So the object I want to look is GPIO, like my inputs. And here I have all the objects concerning GPIO. I want GPIO in analog, because most of my pots are, or all my pots are analog. So here I have an object with an output. That means whatever I'll be doing with my knob, it will reproduce here. And this is the name of the knob. For example, PA0, PA1, so there's all the 15 knobs. If you click on this black triangle here, you have a small menu, and in this menu you have help. If you click help, you get a help patch that opens concerning this object. So here, there's an help patch with all the GPIOs, well, all 15 of them, the analog ones, with a small display. So if I go live, that means I send this patch to my Axolotzy board. It is now launching this, so I can turn a button. For example, here you can see this is my multi-position selector. So it's a pot with eight different positions and then I can test every other pot to make sure they work. Okay, so I've already done this, I won't do it. They all work well. But it's very useful just by one click on one of these objects to have this patch to test them. So in this patch, I'm going to do what my friend asked me. That means you're more or less uh, MS-10 on steroids and uh, polyphonic so on steroids that means with more oscillators but it will only be a one oscillator at the same time um, synthesizer so as it's a synthesizer i need an audio out so i'm going to search for audio here and here are my audio ins and somewhere down here i have audio out stereo so I could have put just audio left or right as I'm only going to be working in mono, but I'll be using the stereo object in case I do something with the stereo later. So this is an object that you'll probably have in all your patches, unless your patch doesn't make any sound, but you need this object to be able to get sound out of your card. And now I'm going to just test my output with an oscillator. So I'm going to search for oscillator and I'm going to search for PWM, which is pulse width modulation. So this is just a single oscillator that I can hook up to the outputs and test. This will probably be loud. So there you can see my sound is working. That means my Axolotl is working. So I now want to control this oscillator with a MIDI keyboard that I've also plugged in. So it's plugged in in USB, it's just a simple controller keyboard. So I'm going to fetch an object in the MIDI, so I'm going to search MIDI. I could have searched keyboard because I know it's called Keyb. And here there's an object called MIDI in keyboard. So there's different objects, you can explore all these objects. There's hundreds and hundreds of different objects in each category. They all have something more or less different. A MIDI and keyboard is what I'm going to use now. So it's going to take whatever note I press on my keyboard and send it out here. Send out a gate information, that means when I press it sends on, and when I depress it sends off. And velocity, if you've got it on your keyboard, the harder I press, the bigger the number comes out here, and the softer I press, the lower the number. So I'm going to test my MIDI keyboard first. Uh, let's put a VCA. 
So this is an amplifier controlled by a voltage. This is, I'm going to use the gate, so it will be either 100% or 0%. So no envelope, but a signal stop and start, start and stop. So I'm now going to test it with my keyboard. So I'm playing a few notes next to me. So my keyboard works. So I'm going to start now making the architecture of my synthesizer. I want several oscillators. So I'm going to choose some oscillators. There's lots and lots of oscillators in Axolotti, especially now that they've converted mutable instruments, birds, oscillators. And uh, they have some very nice oscillators actually now. They were very nice before, but um, there's more now. And in the community, people are coming out with some very interesting oscillators too. So I'm going to use first a triangle to have a very soft sound. And I think the MS-10 had a triangle. So somewhere here there's a triangle. But there's also a triangle fold. I've got underneath my eight position selector to select my oscillator, I've got a variation button which can give me a variation in each oscillator. So by taking this triangle fold, I managed to have an oscillator with some variation. So actually it transforms the triangle into a multiple triangle by way folding the signal. So this will be my triangle. Then I want a saw. So I could search saw, I could just search oscillator and I could put a saw with super saw with a variation, or there's this V saw that sends this. It's a bit like a super saw, but it's not really detuned, it's dephased. And by moving the timber quite fast, you can make it into some kind of super saw signal. It's strange, it's, it's interesting, I quite like it. It's a bit like a pulse width modulation, but with a saw. And then I'm going to use a square with pulse width modulation. Then I'm going to use some noise. I'll use some Gaussian noise. And then I'd like to use a sample maybe. So samples work by tables, by loading a sample in a table and by playing this table. I'm going to search for table play. And this will be my sample player. And while I'm doing this, I might uh, as well put the table load to load the sample. So table allocates 16B SD RAM load. This will put a file into a name of a table, which I'll go and fetch here. So this is my sample, so I'll go and fetch my sample. I've got one called symbol something. So this will be called sample. And it's quite big. And the table is called sample. And then I want to put a wavetable. So wavetable, there's a nice object in the community made by Technobear TB. Um, so it's wavetable play and wavetable load. So wavetables, it's small cycles of oscillations that you can go and fetch, uh, that you can go and play um, like an oscillator. So you, you make them or you can convert. Uh, wave signals into small oscillators. So this is the player and uh, you go and fetch a table and here this is a load a loader uh, made uh, especially for wavetables. So wavetable I've got one I made called big 128 1024. So 128 is the amount of wavetables I put in these small waves the size of each of these waves was 1024 samples. So this is my wavetable loaded and this will be called wavetable, wavetable 
I'm going to fetch it here, wave table. And then, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's enough for the moment. And then it comes out on this VCA. So I could test them all. I first want to find a way of selecting one of these by using my eight position selector. I'm going to use an object called Mux. So there's these objects called Mux and Dmux. Mux gives you several inputs and one output and Dmux does the opposite. It gives you one input that you can send to whatever output you want. So here I'm going to use a eight Mux because maybe I'll have, well, I've got an eight position selector and um, I want to select one out of eight oscillators. So all these oscillators will be going into the different inputs. So for the moment only six, but it's enough. And the output to the VCA. And then I need some way of using my selector. Because here in input it wants a number between zero and eight to be able to choose between one of these. So I'm going to fetch an object that I've actually, well it's a sub-object that I've created called SebtiSynth because it's the name of this synthesizer. I've already done this but I'll show you what's inside. So these, this is a sub-object. It's an object that you save under a certain extension and then you can call it up as an object. And if I go down on this menu and put embed as patch patcher it will open up this sub object and show what's inside so I've got my four buttons the way I've wired up the buttons they need to be in pull up position and go through an inverter for them to work as a usual button I've done it that way because that way I can use these digital as outputs to light up a lead or other possibilities and then I've got all my analog inputs and this one is my multi-position one. As you can see, it's a bit special compared to the others that just go straight to the output with the name of the input here. So this PC3 is my multi-position selector. This will be sending, like all of these, a signal that goes from zero to 64 with lots of decimals in between. And I want as an output something that goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So here I need to divide my signal, so multiply it by a 0. Point something. 0 0.11 seemed to work with me. Round it out, that means it's only giving me a result. Well, let's test this. Um, I'm going to put display. I'll search for display, D-A-S-I-S-B and display the integer. So this will display what's coming out. And I'm going to go live. So it says, this is a sub patch. Do you want to go live? Well, this one I can because there's no output or whatever. So apart from what I'm showing. And here, if I turn my knob, I can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I go to the maximum and I change this multiplier, you can see so you see the number, and I just want seven as my maximum number, and then in between I have whole numbers because it's rounded out and it's converted to an integer here. So this is how my patch called SEPTI or sub-patch um, works. It's just a reproduction of all my buttons and um, all my pots and the converter for my multi-position. So the multi-position is what I want to use to be able to choose which oscillator I'm going to be listening to or, or going through. Now I have to plug in the MIDI keyboard into all of these for the pitch. My pitch will be modulated by my keyboard by 
my bend and by a, a low frequency oscillator, an LFO. So I know that my pitch will be going through a mixer to mix these different signals. So I'm going to fetch a mixer, a blue mixer, so because it's a um, K-rate signal, control rate. So the notes need to be multiplied here by 64. That means a gain of one for it to be as notes are supposed to be. That means do, re, mi, fa, so, le, si. If it's anything underneath, if I put this in, in channel, channel one, anything underneath, you'll be doing some kind of micro-tuning, strange tuning stuff. So if you put it in the bus input, it multiplies by one automatically. You have got no knob to choose the volume, so that's what I usually use for my keyboard that way. Unless, of course, I want to use micro-tuning. So that's my keyboard, and this will, the mixer will be going out in every pitch of every oscillator. So I should be able to now test it. So if I go live, here I'm on the first position of my um, selector. I'm going to change position. So this must be now the VSAW. Exactly. Now it's the PCM. Okay. Then it's noise. Uh, then it's the sample that doesn't work, and I know why. It's because this sample needs to be triggered, and I haven't put a trigger. The trigger is sent by the gate of the keyboard. Um, there's two different gates. There's gate and gate two. Gate is with legato, so if you keep a button pressed and you press a button afterwards, there's uh, no re-trigger. And gate two... Um, each time you press a key, it re-triggers. So you, according to what you want, I quite like using gate two. Um, so let's try it now. So this is my sample. It's the symbol. This is my wavetable. Okay, so this is working well. I'm now going to add an envelope and a filter. So in my envelope section, I'm going to click ENV. I want an ADSR with modulation inputs because I'm going to be using the buttons of my box. So this is my ADSR and this will be coming out into my VCA and gated by the same gate of my keyboard. So the number of my buttons, it's, I know release is 15, but these um, pot outputs are sending me unipolar signal. That means a signal between zero and 64 or zero and one, or whatever. The signal you want on the output is bipolar here. You can see it by plus and minus, and you see it here on the controls. It goes plus and minus, and they're actually all bipolar apart from the sustain, which, okay, here it says plus or minus, but I think it's a mistake because it responds only to unipolar signal. So these signals need to be conver converted from unipolar to bipolar. So I'm going to fetch an object called unipolar. So I've put uni and it says convert bipolar to unipolar. No, I want the opposite, unipolar to bipolar. So 15 is my release. It's the last bottom of my box. So I need a few of these objects. So I select an object, Control C, Control V. I can do that several times because I'm going to need a few. Uh, sustain. This doesn't need an object, so let's do attack. 
attack is one, two, three, button three. Um, and then DK, four, five, six, seventh button. Okay, and then eight, nine, ten, eleven will be my sustain directly because it's unipolar. So here I now have my envelope controlling my VCA. Let's test it quickly. So all these need to be in middle position or basic position for it to be respond to pots. So here I put everything to zero on my pots and I have just this small click. I'm going to give more DK. This is more DK, but if I let go of the keyboard, because there's no release, I'm going to add some release. Okay, this works. Add sustain and a bit of attack. So my envelope is working with my volume, my VCA. I now would quite like to put a filter, so I'm going to fetch a filter, VCF, or just search filter, for example, filter. And you'll see there's lots and lots of different kind of filters. Um, there'll probably be more with the community getting bigger and people programming these things. Thank you, community, for making such great things. So I'm going to use a filter that was in the factory. It's called VCF. It's VCF3. It doesn't use too much CPU. It sounds quite nice. I like it. And, um, and well, we're going to use this. So I connect it between this output of all my oscillators and my VCA. So on the input of this filter, I want to have different modulations as well. So as I will be doing for the pitch, I will now do also for the VCF. That means add a mixer. So I'm going to take a three input mixer and send it to the pitch. So the main thing I want, so the pitch here is bipolar, so I'm going to be having having to send bipolar signals here. So the main thing is the knob. So I'm going to fetch a unipolar to bipolar, get the knob, which is my button two, transform it to bipolar and go into my mixer and it will go into the bus because it will be maximum, um, maximum range. Then I wouldn't mind being able to have my um, envelope as a modulation of my filter. So this envelope, I'm going to send it to an object called a multiplier. So I put a star and this searches for objects with multiplications in it. And this multiplies a, a rate of blue signal by another blue signal. So this is what I need. Have my envelope, which be sending and have it multiplied by a knob on my um, panel. So as it's an envelope and it's on the filter, I could have it multiplied either positively or negatively because an envelope is actually an envelope is unipolar and I wouldn't mind having it bipolar before. So I'm going to transform it before going into the multiplier. And then the multiplier will also have a bipolar signal. That way my envelope of the filter can be inverted, which sometimes, quite rarely when it's the same filter as the um, VCA, but rarely it can be useful. So the button here is 13th button, will be my multiplier. So in the middle, this button will multiply it by nothing. As soon as I go over the middle, it will be sending um, the um, envelope and under it will be sending the inverted signal of this envelope. So this needs to be sent into my mixer and maximum because I've got an amount of control here that will go from 0 to 64 anyway, or well, 0 to 1. 
I would also like to have an LFO. So if I search for LFO, I'll find lots of different objects and I'm going to use one which is quite useful, made by someone in the community, by Arlestad, sorry, or DRJ. And this object um, is an LFO which gives you different waveforms, so five different waveforms and um, different kind of modulations and in inputs. So the output of this LFO will also go through a multiplier because I want a button to choose the amount of LFO I'm sending to my filter. So this button will be, will be the ninth. And this is only positive because this signal is bipolar. And, oh, I could have it to invert the phase two, but I don't need it, I don't think. Um, so this goes into the filter, maximum here, maximum here on the amplitude. And then I need a way to change the speed of this LFO. So in the inputs here, also asks for bipolar inputs. So I need to copy one of these. And the speed of my LFO is on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh no, it doesn't. Oh. What do I put 14 on? Other quantity, this isn't 14, this is 13, sorry. 14 is my speed. So that's the speed, and then I have to have something to choose the waveform. I'm going to do the same um, trick as I did inside this object. That means multiply it by a small number, it means divide it, and then round off the number to make it a whole number to choose the waveform. So I'm going to put a multiply by C and convert to I and a display to see what numbers I'm showing up. And my button here for the choice of my waveform will be my 10th button. So let's just launch this to see what's happening. So here nothing because I've got this multiplied by zero. I'm going to put my button to the maximum, my pot, and it's showing 23. I want here five or six because I, I might add an extra one, but this is... There we go, six, perfect. So now if I go down, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So it's actually seven, so it's got six. So let's go five, four, three, two, perfect. Okay, so this goes into the waveform selector. So I've now got an LFO going into the multiplier, going into my mixer, going into my VCF. Well, this LFO, I also wouldn't mind it modifying my pitch. So I'm going to put another multiplier, send it into my pitch, and take the LFO out, going into this multiplier, and the button that will multiply this will be eight. So now when I turn the, my eighth knob, it it will send more or less of this LFO to my pitch. So let's just try it now and see what's happening. So let's put an envelope with only sustain and a bit of release. And um, so here I have, um, I had the button of um, amount of LFO on the filter. So the LFO is working, the 
envelope, I don't know, I didn't test it, I'm um, sorry. Let's get rid of the LFO. So the envelope seems to be working on the VCF too. Um, I'm going to just wire in the resonance of my VCF. So this is just a single unipolar signal. So it's just my button really. One, two, three, four, five. It's my fifth output. So what have I got as buttons not being used? My fourth button is the variation of each of my oscillators. So it's the pulse width, it's the timber on the V-saw, it's the uh, folding of the um, triangle, it's the pitch uh, start position for the sample, and it's the wavetable wave selection for the wavetable. Well, I'm going to um, put my um, pot, my output, onto all of these, but I also wouldn't mind having my LFO to be able to um, adjust these um, variables too. So I'm going to fetch a small mixer. I think a one position mixer would probably be enough. In the bus I'll put straight my button, so it's button four, and I could put actually a plus, because if I put a plus object it's exactly the same as having a mixer with both at 64. And on the other input of this, it will be my LFO through a multiplier because I want to choose the quantity of um, of this LFO. So 14, 13, 12. 12 is my amount of LFO on the variation button. So this goes under here this is the plus object so you see it plus here and my oh, multiplied here otherwise they look exactly the same as the objects and then this comes out and goes into each variation of each oscillator Ooh. so now if I go live To avoid um, problems, I'm going to actually go through um, a mixer here and um, so my button, yes, but the LFO, I only want it multiplied by 32 maximum so that it doesn't go over my signals too much. Plugged for some reason. So that's square pulse width. So with a bit of modulation. is the wave table. Okay. So I think I need to control the volume somehow between the output of all these oscillators and the filter, so I'm going to put an object which is called multiplied by C, so it's multiplied by a constant, and if it's a red one, well, it's more or less a volume control. So 
now I have this object and I can control because it, it was saturating a bit. So of course when the resonance is high it does saturate a lot. So this is probably a control I'd need to adjust. What have I not plugged in? Button six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is my actually my high pass filter. I'm not going to do this straight away. I'll do it later because I only want a high pass filter for the whole patch and not for the um, each voice of the polyphonic um, synthesizer. So what I'm going to do now is transform this mono patch, because this is mono for the moment, into my four voice polyphonic um, synthesizer. So I'm going to leave these out and all the rest I'm going to select, which I'm not going to select the um, out stereo, I'm just going to select all this and do a control X cut. So it's gone. Where's it gone? Uh, and create an object called patcher. So this patcher is a super meta patcher. It makes you do a patch in a patch. So if you do edit now, it opens another patch. And here I'm going to do control V and it glues all my patch. So this is, oh, I'll tell you what I haven't done actually in this patch. I haven't done the, um, the pitch bend. So for doing a pitch bend, it's one of these modulations. I could put also the um, ADSR envelope in the modulation maybe of the um, pitch. I did it from the first uh, version, but I prefer now to use the button for the um, for the LFO on the, the variation of, of the oscillator. So I need the pitch bend, so I'm going to double click and search for bend. And I have something called MIDI in bend, and this will go into one of my inputs. And so maximum value here of my pitch bend will be 32 semitones, so it could be 64, which is a lot. Um, I like having it on two when I play on the keyboards, but you can put it on whatever you want or have it even adjustable. So here we're in the sub patch. In this sub patch, I want to be able to control a few things. Well, maybe this. So I'm going to click on it and go parameter on parents, and that means I'll see it when it will be in the sub patch. I wouldn't mind seeing my volume control. And I think that will be enough for the moment. And then I need to put an outlet. So inlets and outlets are what you see when a sub patch is put in the patch. So this will be an, an audio output. And this is where the sound will be coming out. So this is my patcher. I need to now deselect all the objects. That means not have an object selected, but have none. And go to view settings. And this will be the settings of this sub patch. And I want it to be polyphonic. Uh, by choosing has MIDI selector, it gives you, let's do it and we'll see. So close this and now this is my sub patch. I need to update it and here we go. So it's the two knobs that I, um, two dials that I wanted to see in the parent. So this is my pitch bend range and this is the volume of the oscillators before going into the filter. And this is the audio output. This is the number of polyphony I want to use and the different MIDI I'm, I use to get into this sub patch. So here you have the choice of the different channels and the different, sorry, channels and the different input devices. So it could be um, Omni, that means everything. That's what I usually use because I only have one keyboard on, on a box, but if you have something in the MIDI DIN, something in the USB, well, you can choose the different input you want to use. 
and if in this patch, let's go edit, so this is the patch, I don't choose um, has MIDI selector, you'll find yourself like this without the MIDI channel or anything and it will just be the simple version. So I'm going to try this with a polyphonic version of four voices and I'm going to go live and just, oh, something went wrong. So I know what went wrong, that's good. Well, it's not good. Go edit here. Um, my wavetable and wave and sample are in the basic patch and this is in the sub patch. So I need to say go to the root. So it's dot dot slash dot dot slash here too. And that way it knows it's going to go to the root of the patch to fetch these tables. So hopefully it was just that. Update a few times. Go live. And I've got a polyphonic version of it. So this is my basic patch. You can always spend hours and hours getting um, getting it just right and having great fun. Um, some things to do is maybe adjusting the different scalings of the inputs and maybe um, there's some small things you can do is let's say add uh, noise. This is a small example. Uh, actually, it's not noise, it's random. So it's a random signal in... Um, so like a pink noise, but that very slow speed, that means control speed. I'm going to put this into the um, uh, input of the pitch. I could also put the same one actually into the uh, filter here. And then I'm going to say, show me these inputs and then we'll see what it does. So I've just put noise sources into the pitch and into the um, pitch of the filter, into the cutoff. So let's go live here and put them down. It wasn't those, was it? And just gets a simple sound. So this is the one on the pitch, and this is the one on the filter. So the base is to use this as some kind of small randomness. So to use it with very small numbers, something like 0 0.01, especially for the pitch, because otherwise you're getting into really strange noises. And it gives us tiny bits of instability to the oscillator, which is always quite fun. So that's the kind of thing that you can add. You can really do whatever you want, change the oscillators. Um, so normally what I'd do now is add uh, the high pass filter. So there's several different high pass filters. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to use this one. So this is, this is one filter for the whole patch. It's not one per oscillator like it would be inside this block. 
and I'm going to go and get my GPIO, which is an analog, and it's my button C2, PC2. So this pitch is bipolar, because it goes from minus to pos positive, and my button is only unipolar, so I need a unipolar to bipolar converter, and this is my high pass filter. So normally now, if I go live, yep, perfect. So you can't see anything move here because it's me moving the control. I mean, I could do it like this too. But as I'm controlling it by this modulation input, it's my button and you don't see it really, unless you put a display. And you can display a button, or well, I mean dial, um, bipolar. And that way you'll see where my button is. So here's my simple patch. Um, last little thing I'll show you, for example, is how to make a simple looping device um, using just delays. So I'm going to fetch um, a sub object called long delay that I made. And if I search and look what's inside, it's just a kind of simple delay, but with a very long time here. And, um, or you can always study that. So this long delay, I'm, I, I'm going to put three of them. And I'm going to use an object called DMUX. So before we used an object called MUX, which is several entrants for one output. This is the opposite. So I need a four position. So this will take my sound and it will send it, let's send it into a four voice mixer. So this time it's a red mixer because it's sound. And this will be the voice straight out of, um, well, in position one. That means it doesn't go through any of these delays. And then in the second position, it goes through the first delay, and then the second delay, and then through the third delay. And then I'm going to put a small um, selector. I'm just going to use buttons for the moment to choose the routing if it goes straight or through any of these delays. And then I want to listen to the sound coming out of this mixer. So now I need to just change the length of each of these delay lines. I'm going to make the first one quite short. Um, I'm going to make it, make it 1.30 or bit longer. 2.73 seconds maximum and then this one 10 seconds maximum and then this one is I think is at 20 seconds maximum which is all right and they're all multiples of the other ones so it's quite useful for doing a kind of looping thing but they're not super synchronized um, after some time they do synchronize so I'm going to make a few dials, one for the feedback of every one of them. I could make several uh, feedbacks. One for the speed of each of them. And one for the amount, which will be the wet, uh, dry amount knob. So this is normally 32 in the middle. Um, Speed, which what's quite interesting is going through a low pass filter but for um, K rate signal, control rate. This manages to slow down 
Let's do a fast change here. It slows down the change. It's a bit like a glide. And what it does in the speed of these delays, it really makes it into a kind of tape effect. So this needs to be really smoothed out quite a bit. And then the feedback. So if I launch this, and I'm on the first one, so there we go. Let's not put noise. Okay, small signal because I've got my high pass filter. So let's put the volume up here a bit. Let's put bits of pulse width modulation. Okay. So if I go now into here and play, you can hear. So it's a bit needs a bit more volume when it's through the delay lines. It goes through this first delay and it's repeated because the feedback is at 64%. And then I can go to another one go. And do a much longer. This is the amount that I need to put down because it's a bit louder just after playing them. And then the third one. And there you go, yeah, you've got a kind of looper and... So there we are, that's just me playing around. And it's, well, it took me probably an hour to do this patch, but this is just one small example of the kind of things you can do with Axolotti. And as you could see, uh, the CPU is not very high, so I've still got... I've still got a bit more CPU where I could add an extra oscillator, I could add a real-time sampler and and get everything just right. And you can make millions of these patches. This is just one patch that I've made, but I know I'm going to be making at least a few dozen just for this one box.